Welcome to 100 Yards of Sports Today, our NFL edition. On the team we're going to preview is the Denver Broncos, but we got a special guest who's going to be playing for the Broncos this summer. A gentleman is out of Martin Luther King High School. When he came out, went to TCU, transferred to LSU when he made his bones as a tremendous track star, ended up at Texas San Antonio. Now he's going to make his way into the Denver Broncos. I'm going to say it, starting lineup because this gentleman is very <laughs> talented. He's 6'3", 218 pounds, and let me tell you something. Out there on the network of 100 yards of sports, the guy can fly. And like I said, at LSU, who's one of the top track performers, voted second in school history. If you know anything about the LSU track program from a man's and woman's standpoint, Barry, what? that's saying a lot. He was saying voted the second best performer in school history. Yes, and we're sir. talking about some of the great track stars and had that Larry Ship in 1976, Eric Reed Jr. Yeah, no, yeah. senior in 18, 1987, mm -hmm. Tritton Holiday. Remember that name? I knew. I remember Holiday. And <laughs> Xavier Carter. Remember yes, that name in yes. 2006? Yes, this sir. gentleman was voted second best. Let me bring him on. My man, locally from the Atlanta metro area, Mr. Jordan Moore. <laughs> How you doing, man? Welcome back home, baby. Welcome back home. I'm glad to be here back. Here Hi, Atlanta. What's here. up, baby? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 901, Memphis, Tennessee. Hold on. You're going to always get that Memphis in, aren't yeah. you? Every, every single time. We was with you until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you start yelling out the 446 778 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, we'd like to say first of all, God bless to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you um, for having me. Thank you And let me say this. Good luck to your time. Hopefully that everything works out with your time in Denver. And hopefully I'll be able to see you on the screen making the Pro Bowl. But let's get to your story real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, you went to TCU from a football standpoint. Things didn't work out. And you went to LSU, man. And from a track perspective, I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> when you look at LSU's track history, they one of the best track programs, not in the United States, but in the world. Right. Yes. And you went there in two and a half years and was voted the second best performer in all of school history. We're talking about the grace, Larry Ship, Eric Reed Sr., who was a tremendous hurdler in 1987, Xavier Carter, who – in 2006, was all American in track and football, set LSU on fire. Yes, Trenton sir. Holiday, who was a tremendous sprinter, Benny Bazil, and you became the second best performer, my man. Man, God <laughs> bless you. Man. So, just tell us about really from the standpoint what what brought all this tremendous talent out at LSU. Um, uh, really, it was just it was really keeping God first. Uh, my work ethic was I had I knew that upon transferring mm -hmm. wherever I went I was gonna be behind the eight ball so mm -hmm. I knew that I had to come in and perform at a super super high level no matter yes, what because there was not gonna be mm -hmm. any second chances because this was my second chance so when you come in you got to make the best of everything so I knew that coming in um, and I just got around guys that they really sold into my life like the coaches the the fans the people like. You know, I felt like I was playing football every day that I was down there, you know, and the other football players, they respected my game. They knew yes, how, mm -hmm. who I was as a football player, but right. then to emerge as a track athlete because even at TCU, you know, they still didn't consider me fast. I'm the TCU school record holder. Okay. Wow. Big 12 champ. Okay. You know, so and they still didn't consider me to be an elite mm -hmm. athlete, you know, in the coach's eyes over there. So, you know, I did something different and – you know, I had to prove I had to prove people wrong. A lot of people don't know this though. You went to LSU and you definitely proved people wrong. You was a two time All American, two time mm -hmm. All SEC. You know what they're saying? You in the same I would put you in the same class as a gentleman that's out of Griffin, Georgia, that played mm -hmm. for the Chicago Bears Ooh. from Griffin, Willie Gault. Ooh. Willie Gault is the only Boy. one. Boy, to be real, think, Willie hey, Gout. Hey, Willie Gout, made, hey, Willie hey, Gout is the only yo. one that was a three-time All-American <laughs> in track. So I'm gonna put wow. you in the class with that right now. Man, that's wow. a blessing, man. I've never did heard that. Did you know that, that Willie Gout? I did Gout not was know that Willie Gout was yes, sir. Yeah, Willie, here. Willie, that dude, yeah. yeah, Griffin, Georgia. And hold on, before we move forward, let me say this: You're listening and watching 100 Yards of Sports, mm -hmm. the most informative, entertaining, and yes, community-based program sports program on the planet now like the page comment on the page and share the page 
Because you see, we have Mr. Jordan Moore in the building. Listen, if you like what we're talking about, Mr. Football just broke down LSU track history. Comment on the page and shout out Martin Luther King High School. Shout out LSU. Hey, let's keep rocking. Check it out, Mr. Football. Now, now, Willie Gall. Oh, uh, Willie Gall was <laughs> yeah, let me, one of Go let, ahead. Let me say this about yes, Willie Gall before you keep moving. Yes, sir. That's a family friend, first and foremost, <laughs> right there. So shout out to Willie Gall. And we used to tease each other. You know, yes, he's, sir. he's older than me. I, I went to Mar High School. Griffin was in our yes, region. Sir. Right. And um, so when we used to play Griffin, you know, we in my high school career, we, we used to put, we, as, as little Scrappy would say, we used to put them paws on them Griffin Bears, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So, not the paws. Yeah, we used to put them paws on them. So we beat them three. We, we played, I think, four times in my high school career. And um, no, five times, and they only beat us. They only beat us one time yes, in my sir. high school career. We played them in the playoffs um, a couple of times, and we beat them um, in those playoffs games along with the regular season. But my point is, met Willie mm -hmm. when I was in college. Um, he was playing for the uh, the Raiders at the time, okay. mm -hmm. so went to Minnesota to uh, to see the Raiders play the Minnesota Vikings. Mm. So um, connected with Willie, and this is the time he was getting ready. He was getting picked to be on that bobsled team, if right, y'all remember that for right, the Olympics. Right, right. So, um, great story, uh, family friend, man. So, shout out to Willie Galt. But this guy, to be compared to him, and I know what kind of person he is, man, that's an honor, bro. Man, so, I had to share that story that. with you because he's a great guy. And, um, hey, man, that's that's a great comparison, bro. Well, what you're looking at, like I said, brother, see, I do my homework. Yes, I sir, wasn't looking do. at his I wouldn't look at his tape. Mm -hmm. he, now, let me get this correct. In the 110 hurdles, your best time was what now, Mr. Moore? In college? Yes, sir. Uh, my best time in college was 13.45. See, I'm going to tell you something else about royalty. That time right there goes to some of the greats that was in track. Uh, yes, remember sir. Rob Milborn? Kudos, he passed. But mm -hmm. the great sprinter from Southern University, yes, Willie, Davin Willie Davenport, remember yes, him? I know another that name. gold medalist in the Mexico City Games, Roger Kingdom, another local guy, 88 Saul Korea. You yes, see sir. what I'm saying? This guy time is royalty. So we right. need to treat him like royalty today. <laughs> so let's oh, let man. him speak yes, and all his time at LSU. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So uh, work ethic wise. Okay. Work Talk ethic about that. At LSU? Yes, sir. Man, work ethic wise at LSU. I took my work ethic to a whole nother level because Ooh. I knew I was around guys like Nathan Neal, Mitchell Blake, uh, on the football side, Jamal Adams. Uh, yes. yes, sir. I remember when <laughs> Dante Jackson was just a pup. I really? remember, you know, all those guys. Right, Arden right. Key, my little cousin, I remember. Yeah, right. when, I remember when he was in ninth grade, you yes, know, sir. at MLK with me. Wow. You know, so to see him go through the ranks, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to those guys. But mm -hmm. work ethic had to be, bar none, I probably had the, some of the best work ethic there at all any athlete in, in mm -hmm. any any sports. I mean, it was a lot of them that were up there, too, you right. know, but I felt like I was one of the ones that really put the work in day in, day out, and it, it showed in a lot of things that I did. Now, you, you kind of thought about going pro and track here and there. Um, tell us about that, because you had some, some of the times that was best, like the young man out there in Oregon who mm -hmm. I didn't know you said one of your best friends, Devin Allen. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that experience, and, and even though you still – Really, maybe be considering that if time, if if it works out with the football, you right. maybe can run it all season. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. I actually, um, I ran this season. I ran a one track meet this year Ooh. just to get a nice little tune up and loosen my body up. But I didn't really just try to compete at super high level. I mean, now I, I definitely could like right now. <laughs> seriously, just because of the the shape that I'm in, and I, right. man, this off season has been the best off season workout ever. But you know, being at LSU and Doing, you know, going through the track ranks and things like that. Um, I remember running against Devin when I was young. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I knew every time it was like a heavyweight fight with me and him. Like, <laughs> we would never, our coaches would never mm -hmm. let us race each other until like the last <laughs> minute. Wow. Like, well, seriously, yeah. it was just like, wow. seriously, it was like George Foreman and Ali. Yes, wow. sir. Like, with a, and everybody in the SEC, everybody in the country, NCAA, they knew mm -hmm. once we got together. It was going to be a showdown, and I, he he pushed me to be one of one of the best athletes. Now you know what I'm most proud of you uh, that you did at LSU through all the accolades and honors. You got your degree in sociology. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Explain, because I know that had to be real tough in managing you being, like I said, on that level, and then also maintaining your books. Right. Um, I'm almost finished with my master's. Uh, oh, but going I was going to bring that up at Texas San Antonio Public yes, Administration, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, the sociology degree, I, it was really like a mandate. Like, if I didn't 
Mm-hmm. Most people didn't know if I didn't gradu- graduate mm-hmm. during that summer, I would be able to play football. I wouldn't even be in the NFL. Well, I would probably be in the NFL, but it wouldn't have went as smooth as it did. It would probably be a whole nother, another route to get there. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So I had to graduate to do that. So it pretty mm-hmm. much my books was everything. I took 21 hours the last three semesters I was in college. Man, so well, well, I got a question then. Because we, we have a program called the Student Athlete Achievement Program. Right. And when you start talking about being a student athlete, mm-hmm. from what you just said, obviously when you went to school initially, period, LSU, TCU, San Antonio, right. that sounds like that was the foremost thing in your mind. Like, I got to make sure that I hit these books first mm-hmm. and foremost. I mean, was that your mindset? Uh, yeah, man. Like, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to miss by any means. Like, after I left TCU, like, I was like, look, I'm behind. <laughs> wow. I got to grind mm-hmm. every single day, and I can't take anything for granted. So I was like, I can't let my book slip because if I don't Absolutely. run, mm-hmm. you know, it's really going to look back, and it's going to look mm-hmm. like, okay, what was his problem when there was never a problem at TCU, you know what I'm saying, on my behalf. Right. You know, so I just didn't want to raise any red flags. So I was like, look, I'm going to get these books out of the way. And then it was just like, wow, like it was just another accomplishment in my life because, you know, where I come from, you know, East Atlanta, man, many people don't <laughs> yes, have sir. a degree That's or even think talk. about going to college or owning their own business. So Absolutely. I had to be the difference maker. Wow. Then you made your transition after your great career at LSU. You decided to get back into football. And like I said, what, what made you pick Texas San Antonio? You played the last year there. First off, Coach Frank. Frank Wilson. First and foremost, because <laughs> I love him to death. Um, so here was the story. You know, uh, upon going into the summer, getting ready for the Olympics, mm-hmm. uh, I met a guy by the name of Will Thomas, who's going to be one of the greatest probably college coaches in history. Nobody really just knows about him yet. Okay. But um, And it's just how he treats people, how he goes about things. His brother is Austin Thomas, who's the head football operations guy at LSU. Okay. Mm-hmm. They fought to get me to play at LSU mm-hmm. when Les Miles was there. But right. compliance that, was right, being slow right, on the right. other end of everything. But Will fought for me. Will left. When I was training for the Olympics, going to the Olympics that summer, Will left and went to UT, UT San Antonio with Ooh. Coach Frank. Gotcha. Wow. I had already met Coach Frank before, but just for them to both be together. Mm-hmm. So I was about to turn pro after the Olympics. I was like, dang, I really don't want to turn pro in this. I was like, I really want to just you play football. You still had football. that football blood. Yeah, because <laughs> I was just like, I mean, I was, it was hard for me to lose weight, everything right. like that. So I was just like, man, you know what? And it just wasn't fun. It wasn't no it, the aggression wasn't there anymore. I love track and field to death. They know I'm track nation to death. But for me, it, it wasn't no aggression there. Like you know, uh, mm-hmm. I like aggression, the boxing, the different things like that because it's just it's just it's, it's me. You know, mm-hmm. so I had to do that. Mm-hmm. And Will went over there. Will called me. Will said, I was like it was like two days before graduation. And right. I, I had to pass this last Spanish class, and this teacher did wow. not want to give me the Ooh. grade. <laughs> well, boy, I was going to get my grade, and I got my grade. Right. Yes, sir. But upon getting that grade and persevering <laughs> through it, you know, to the last final day, mm-hmm. Will called me, stayed with me until I graduated and got my papers back. And he was like, hey, do you want to play football? I was Amen. like, yes, sir, wow. I want to play football again. I went to different schools. I went to some big schools, you know. I went to USC and, mm-hmm. you know, things like that upon transferring. And I was just like, nah, you know, I had options. But then Will hey. called me and said, you know what I'm saying, that we got you in the grad school. So then I left and went. And, you wow. know, I, wa- I watched mm-hmm. Coach Brown. I saw a little video mm-hmm. on uh, Mr. Moore. I'm going to call him <laughs> Mr. Moore. That's right. And I could have swore now. I know he had a game his last year at Texas San Antonio that, he had, what, six tackles against Moore, Tennessee State, yeah. had an interception. But, you know, he kind of remind me mm-hmm. of a young Sean Taylor oh, out wow. of the U. Now, Ooh. I'm not saying he's Ooh. Sean Taylor, Ooh. but okay. look at the size. Sean oh, yeah, Taylor, about 6'3", six, six, about, six, right. about 220, right. can really play in the line of scrimmage. And this gentleman right here, I don't know what Denver's got playing, mm-hmm. but he like he gonna be a guy that can play in the box real well out oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And look like he might wreak some havoc with Von Miller. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know exactly you know what, what you're saying. saying. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, at his size, yeah. And with I his mean, speed, he, look, he like Sean he can, Taylor. He can feel. He can feel. And, and if you're gonna speak about this real quick, please do. It looks like you can feel the alleyways on run plays very well coming from right. a. I like I like my safeties big. And I had to put them at mm-hmm. free safety, right? So they can come on both sides of the alleys and fill up them run plays right. and everything. And then, of course, with the speed, 
he can get back deep to cover any deep threats on both sides of the field. And that's, so that's that's what, I, what that's what I see in but, him myself. But, but I saw him. Yes, he was sir. able to play in so the Denver, box. So Denver, you taking notes? He was able to play in the box <laughs> mm-hmm. and really kind of feel inside. But right, right quick, right. Um, Jordan, you going out there in Denver? Uh, what do you think about? We was talking about off the air. You say you love John Elway, excellent man, one that brought mm-hmm. you on. What do you feel about y'all bringing in Case Keenum? I think it's great. You know, um, I'm always down for change. You know, and this is a business of change. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, <laughs> if 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 people um, if people can't get the job done, you know, in this league, you just gotta find some. It's the next man up type of league. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's no disrespect to anybody else's game. It's just John Elway and, and those guys making an executive decision. That's like. If I came in and I wasn't up to par what I needed to be, yeah. I would expect them to get rid of me. That's just it's just a revolving door, and that's how it works. And it's, it's no hard feelings, but I, I think Case Keenum's good for the team. Now in the secondary, you're not gonna be. I, I want to say I'm gonna give a line of love today, but you're gonna mm-hmm. be out there with some love, Brandon Roby and Brendan Langley. Mm-hmm. And um, have they told you what to what to expect out there so far? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so when I, I came into this season. Wanted to be one of the most versatile players in the mm-hmm. NFL. I'm mm-hmm. doing kick returns this year. I, I've taken off uh, weight. I was like 220, but now I'm back ooh. down to like 212, 210. Oh, wow. Ooh. Okay. I probably yeah. look like I'm about 225, right. but I'm 212, 210. You lean. You do look like you're about, about 225, but you yeah. lean. I'm telling you, you like a Sean Taylor. Yeah, right? I'm like 210, 212, and it's, okay. the, this is like, you know, it's kind of scary to say it, but this is the fastest that I've ever been. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure it's the fastest that I've ever been. It's the That's best good, that I've man. felt. Mm-hmm. Um, but pretty much, man, I want to. I'm going to be able to play. I can play corner, free safety, outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. You know, strong safety. Wherever they put me, I can play. That's why I had to, you know, fluctuate my weight just a little bit. But now I've, I found it. I found that grown man weight. So okay. I'm ready. Okay. Well, um, we like to say, Mr. Moore, thank you for coming on today. Many blessings to you. Yes, sir. Um, God be with you. Uh, you got a tremendous story that needs to be told. Yes, sir. A track athlete not going to be able to play pro pro right. football at a very high level. I think you're going to make the team. I think when you look at it, that second day that Denver has, Chris Harris, right. Brandon Robin, with you playing safety, I think, hey, the Broncos are going to be a much better defensive team. Coach Brown, your yeah. final words well, to Coach Well, Mr. I just want I want him to mention, hey, but we can't let him get out of here with oh, yeah, mentioning 30 yeah. gang, man. Oh, yes, what, I'm sorry. Yeah, 30 gang. You, you talking about a man in the community, right. which is what we I'm do. Sorry. You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm sorry. You met Coach Spencer off, off the, um, before you got on tape here today. Mm-hmm. And so, man, tell us about 30 gang because we, we're in the community. Yes, sir. Our 100 yards of sports is about okay. community. Perfect, Tell us about man. 30 game real quick. Shout out to all of my boys, man. 30 game, 30 game to all of the young boys out there. <laughs> um, pretty much 30 game, we just – we go into the community, man, and I give kids a different perspective. I try to bring exposure to a lot of their uh, family issues and things that they go through just so the world can see um, mm-hmm. life through their eyes. So pretty much, man, I, I just go in and I'm like their big brother. Mm-hmm. I show them the way and I, I show them that I'm somebody that I feel like you need to look to because the direction that I'm going – I think you want to go. So Amen. if you don't have anybody to look up to, I'll be that guy. So that's that's pretty much what 30 Gang is, and we just – it's wherever. We go to different schools, everything. You know, I got a few schools to go to next week. I'm going to Mississippi this weekend to speak um, in front of a 1,000 boys from the Boys and Girls Club. So, Excellent. Um, Excellent. Yeah, man, that's what 30 Gang stands for. We're changing the community, man. J. Mo, Prince of the City. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And before we conclude the show today, uh, you need to make it down to the 901 Orange Mile, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you today for uh, watching 100 Yards of Sports. Thank you, Mr. Jordan oh, Moore. Man, thank you all so Good much. Good luck. Sir. Thank, thank you, brother. you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, Bear Brown. Yes, I appreciate yes, these guys. And we'll see you next week on 100 Yards of Sports. Yes, sir.